Hey guys, welcome back to Ridgeback Farm. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on the Xmark uh, Quest S Series uh, zero turn mower. Uh, mower's got just under 60 hours. Um, been about a year since I've done an oil change, so figured with uh, springtime coming up, lawn mowing season getting in order, uh, go ahead and get this done and um, show you guys how it how it uh, goes. Pretty easy. Um, I like what Xmark's done with uh, with their engine. They've got a uh, oil uh, drain plug or tube here, excuse me, and then the filter is, is easily accessible there. Uh, can be a little bit messy with the oil filter there. A um, little bit hard to get a drain bucket in there, but uh, for all intents and purposes, you kind of pull down on the tube here. Uh, require just a little bit of a wiggle, and essentially what'll happen is with the uh, Gravity just kind of come out of there. A little bit, gets a little stuck there for sure. I've had the engine warming up for uh, well, about 10 minutes or so. I'll give it some time to drain and kind of go to the bottom of the crankcase. So I'll just give that a moment to uh, to drain out, and uh, I'll go ahead and take the filter off. So one nifty thing that I did is uh, you can kind of see it in there. I looped it underneath the um, hydraulic disengage pin that you pull to try and you know move it by hand uh, pull you know put the, the drain plug under there and, and that way gravity is kind of always in your favor give it some time to uh, to drain out and, all right so that's uh, pretty much uh, draining down so what we'll do next is I've got a um, you know, food container uh, Tupperware here and I'll just kind of slide this underneath and uh, go ahead and try and make as little a mess as possible and uh, get that to empty out. So like I said, very, very easily accessible. Um, Xmark, uh, one of the biggest highlights I have with this engine is just the ease of doing the maintenance on it from a oil change perspective. Um, so you'll see that uh, got a little bit of dirt there on the outer side, but we'll just go ahead and Go ahead and clean that off. Make sure we don't get anything on the uh, on the gasket surface. Make sure that the old gasket came off, which it did, which is good. And you hear horror stories about people doubling up on gaskets uh, inadvertently, and uh, next thing you know, they've got a a blown motor. So always good to just clean that up. And, uh, not a lot in there, so we'll go ahead and just dump that in the. In the bucket. Set that aside. One of the uh, nifty things about uh, the Xmark uh, dealership near us is, and I think we can get these at all the all the dealerships, but we've got a nice maintenance package here that comes with uh, everything you need to be able to do the oil change. Uh, comes with two and a half quarts of oil. Uh, this is Toro, but they use essentially the same engines. Uh, 10 W30 fully synthetic. Um, that's everything you need there from an oil perspective. They come with a uh, oil filter, so you can just throw a little bit of other oil on there and uh, thread it on. Good to go. I always put a little bit in here just to, so that the engine, the engine filter isn't needing priming. Um, air filter, and then uh, comes with a fuel filter. So mine is pretty. Uh, pretty gnarly, like a lot of dust, so that'll eventually work its way into the fuel system. Um, definitely tell a difference when you need to be able to change one of those. You start hearing the engine lag a little bit. When you go forward with the uh, the joysticks, it's a little bit of a hesitation. So um, one of the things to keep in mind there, when uh, if you're mowing along and you can't uh, tell why your, your mower isn't as responsive. And then uh, two uh, NGK uh, spark plugs. So. Um, can change those out just got to gap them make sure that they're all set um, I'm gonna hold off on doing these today uh, not necessary for, for the hours that I have on it uh, really today is just critical for the engine service so go ahead and uh, put this filter on and then uh, go ahead and start adding the new oil to it all right so got a nice uh, coating of oil on the gasket there uh, we'll go ahead and thread that on um, like I said just put a little bit of oil in the uh, in the filter have a little bit spill out, but not uh, anything uh, earth shattering. So I'll go ahead and thread that on there. 
thumb tight, no need to uh, tighten that uh, anything further than that. We'll uh, end up uh, spending a lot of time in colorful language trying to get it off. What we'll go ahead and do is, uh, we're just about drained there, so we'll go ahead and tilt this back up, shake any excess. Here, puff it up that way. I'll get it in. So what's nice here is um, a lot of people may be concerned with this kind of over time just kind of sagging down by having this collar on here. Uh, X mark is actually uh, it's kind of a mistake proofing, which is nice. So really, the only way that you can get this off is to pull and, and yank down. Um, that way, like I said, over time, just the bumps and uh, undulations in the uh, in the gravel or in the ground, excuse me, that transfer up into the, the mower uh, don't uh, affect that's ability to uh, to seal. So all right, we've got uh, oil drained. Uh, filter has oil in it, changed out as well. Cleaned off the gasket surface there, and we'll go ahead and add. Uh, Add the oil to it so i'm just going to clean around the uh, fill port here just make sure none of that dirt and debris gets in there like i said really really dusty dry area around around us so just uh, kind of gets into everything as you can tell based on the color of the engine cover and i'm going to put in two quarts to start um, just make sure that uh, Alright, so I've got the oil fill hole cleaned up a bit. I've got a funnel in there. Uh, to start, I'm just going to put in two quarts, um, start her up, and then uh, just kind of let it run for a sec, make sure everything gets primed up, and then go ahead and check the oil, uh, oil lever on her. Definitely don't want to overfill it, um, so better to kind of be able to add more than have to drain and lose what you, what you put in there. Part of the next service that comes up on this, I've only got, like I said, just under 60 hours. Um, next service that's going to be coming due on this will be the uh, transmission uh, fluid and filter change. That's done at 75 hours. Um, I was talking to dealership and the mechanic there and was going to go ahead and do it uh, with this service, but because it's an hour based um, braking process, uh, not necessarily dirt and grime based like engine oils, um, you're uh, with your engine oil, you're getting in debris and dirt and, and crud like that from just regular day operation. Hydraulics are a sealed system, so the hours is really the critical piece of it to make sure that you're getting the proper wear and tear before you take that oil out. Um, it does have some breaking oil in it, so best to let that go to the actual 75 hours or you know close to it. Um, you know, get, get as much break in as, as possible. I'm actually going to go ahead and add half of the half quart. Um, make sure I don't run too low on oil. And then we'll go ahead and start running it. Close enough, I got in the park. Alright, so what we'll do is Start, I'm going to clean off the operator station a little bit for some of this stuff. Go ahead and start her up and let her run for uh, a few minutes and then check her and if we had to we'll, uh, we'll add more. See you in a few. Alright, so we let that uh, idle for oh, full throttle about Three, four minutes. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, let the oil drain uh, maybe in about a minute or two. Um, take a peek at uh, you know what the fill what we're at for a fill level. Add more if we need to, um, and then uh, if we're good, we can leave it be. Uh, one of the important things about the X Mark engine on these Quest S series is um, the design.
design of the engine is such that you need to turn it off at full throttle. Uh, one of the things I didn't realize um, after buying it, kind of looking into it a little bit more, um, the manual obviously states uh, the procedure, but um, it is designed to shut down at full throttle, um, use up as much oil, uh, fuel in the system as possible. And if you don't, if you idle it, a lot of times people will idle it before they turn it off, and, and when they turn it off, it'll actually backfire. And these can backfire so violently that it can actually damage the engine uh, pretty badly. So just something to keep in mind if you do have this mower series with the Xmark engine. Um, again, I think it's just a redesign of the Kawasaki, kind of reverse engineering. Um, but uh, good engine all around, but just something that's a, a little bit different than uh, typically used to with, with engines on lawnmowers and such. So all right, we'll go ahead and take a peek at this. Good. Uh, actually, right at the full line, so we won't go in at any more. Um, I'll take a, after I've run it, uh, mow on a couple times with it. I'll check it again, just make sure nothing uh, nothing's leaking, anything like that. Um, like I said, with this this design here, I really like it uh, with the tube, the rubber tubing, nice and thick rubber gauge, the uh, anti-slip collar on it as well to prevent it from dropping down and having an oil leak, um, and just ease of accessibility. So. Uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for this service. All in all, I think it took me probably, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Not uh, not that bad at all for the DIYer at home. Any questions, drop a, a comment below and I'll, I'll be happy to answer. Like I said, uh, once the 75 hour uh, mark does come up, I will show how to do the hydraulic uh, system changes. There's two independent uh, drives on this. Um, I believe they are the ZT2800, I could be wrong. Um, I'll, I'll drop a, a note in the chat if, uh, if I am. Uh, they are serviceable. They um, have two f independent filters and they're independent fill reservoirs. So the kit that I, I got through Xmark as well comes with a nice adapter so that you are able to uh, screw in actually to the, the uh, vent hole and pump your hydraulic fluid in that way. And then there is a reservoir as well so that any excess get pumps, gets pumped up through that. So. Um, if you like the content, go ahead and, and hit that like button. And if you want to know when I'm, I'm posting more videos, go ahead and hit that bell. And uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to do so. It helps out the channel. And doing a lot of these, these maintenance videos, um, you know, I have the, the Mahindra tractor that I did the, the review on. Uh, that's coming up on uh, about 650 hours. So uh, going to be time for a big uh, maintenance day on that one. And then I uh, have the Farmall H, 1943 McCormick Baldmark 8, Farmall H, excuse me, that... Uh, have uh, gone through and uh, do some videos on that as well so let me know what you want to see and uh, like I said hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one have a good one